subscribe to our youtube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates hello everyone rahul shah here trying to make investing accessible and profitable for the average investor i think some of you already know that the services i run at equity master have been shaped by the teachings of benjamin graham but what shaped graham strategies his rich and varied experiences of course Graham had many experiences during his lifetime but one experience from his early years which I'd like to share with you today would go on to have a profound influence on how Graham thought invested and strategized for the rest of his life in fact this experience is at the center of many grahamian investing philosophies i am referring to the market crash of 1929 Now Graham went to Wall Street in 1914. Remember this is one clever guy we are talking about here. So not surprisingly what followed were 15 years of continuous market success for Graham. Now 15 years is a mighty long time. His success shows that the strategies and investing framework he used worked well. But they were not bulletproof. Not yet. During the period leading up to 1929 Graham knew stock prices were too high he stayed away from the speculative favorites of the time he had good investments but he made one cardinal mistake he borrowed money to invest this meant that even though he made the right moves otherwise how he had funded that investing turned out to be his achilles heel as stocks melted like butter in hot sun prices went from bad to ridiculous graham believed his investments were intrinsically sound and that prices were behaving irrationally and he knew he could have waited it out but his borrowings meant that he did not have the staying power so he had to suffer huge losses he sweated through 1929 to 1932 and the great depression that followed he would never repeat that mistake again it took him until 1937 to restore his financial position to where it was in 1929 from then on equipped with the lessons of the great crash he went along relatively smoothly through all the ups and downs that followed during the rest of his career and he learned how to make money from market crashes rather than lose it Now across my services I too have tried to put in place strategies that will see our investment corpus pass safely through thick and thin whether it's a prolonged slump in the markets or the economy nothing could sound the death knell for our corpus Now I'm not saying our corpus will never suffer a down year of course it will what I'm saying is that the corpus has been built to survive the most devastating market crashes it has been built to hopefully never die now many of our rules serve to help us achieve this i laid out one of the most important ones back in 2014 as part of our buy criteria for stocks all the stocks that are part of my services should not have debt that exceeds 100% of its equity in other words the debt to equity ratio of the company should not be higher than 1 for the latest financial year so by virtue of their high leverage all the banking stocks would be ruled out and hence will not be considered for inclusion in the portfolio i don't think i have recommended a single banking stock over the last 8 to 9 years since banks always have debt to equity ratio of more than 1x i have stayed away from recommending them what applies to graham's investing experience in 1929 also applies to companies a company's assets and business may be sound but if the way those assets are financed makes it difficult for it to go through a prolonged period of bad business irreparable damage can quickly follow that's why i'm very conservative about the borrowings of our portfolio companies the lower the better and i'm never willing to go beyond a debt to equity ratio of 1x I think you will be happy to know this. Here is the performance of a hypothetical portfolio over the last 10 year period that is be- between December 2011 and December 2021 vis-a-vis the benchmark index. 
The reason I'm calling the hypothetical portfolio a bulletproof portfolio is because all the companies that were part of this study had bulletproof balance sheets. In other words, they were all zero debt companies. In fact, here are the rules I used to create these portfolios. Minimum revenue of at least rupees 200 crores for the latest fiscal. Average liquidity of at least rupees 10 lakh per day over the last one year. Debt free balance sheet. In other words, the DE ratio of as close to zero as possible. That's it. No other rules, no valuation rule, no minimum return on equity or return on capital employed rule and no dividend rule. These three rules, that's it. And the most important of all is the rule that the company should be debt free or have as little debt as possible. Now here's the performance of this hypothetical 20 stock portfolio for the 10 years between December 2011 and December 2021. The modus operandi was simple. At the start of every year, you create a 20 stock portfolio with revenues of at least rupees 200 crores and average yearly liquidity of at least rupees 10 lakh. You hold for one year and then invest the proceeds in a new portfolio of 20 stocks that satisfy all the three conditions of revenues, liquidity and debt free balance sheets. You keep doing this for 10 years and this is the result you would have got at the end of 10 years. This simple portfolio has managed to outperform the Sensex by more than 2x, turning every rupees 100 into rupees 900 versus rupees 380 earned by the Sensex. Honestly, I knew that having a portfolio of companies that are all debt free is a low risk strategy. But I had no idea this approach can beat the Sensex by such a significant margin over a 10 year period. Here's the list of the top 20 performance over this time period. D-Link India turned every rupees 100 into rupees 582 in 2014. Atul Auto was a huge 4.6 bagger in 2014. Wimplast a 3.5 bagger in 2014. Geojit again a 3.5 bagger in 2017. Anu Pharma, a three bagger in 2015, and so on, all the way up to Allsec Technologies, a two bagger in 2021. Now, the reason you don't see big names like TCS, Infosys, and HUL here is because I have considered debt free companies in an ascending order of liquidity. This means that a debt free company with the lowest liquidity will be considered first, followed by the next lowest then the next lowest and so on. In a way, you can consider this as a portfolio of small cap companies with debt free balance sheets. You know, investors go to great lengths to find the perfect small cap company. They will do all kinds of research. They will study the business model in detail. They will build a detailed spreadsheet of the company. They will attend all the conference calls. They'll try to value the company and will do a lot of other things. And even after doing all this, there is no guarantee that they will succeed. And here we are shortlisting companies based on just the debt on the balance sheet and are able to outperform the Sensex by a factor of more than two is to one. Is there something wrong in our approach? How can such a simple strategy lead to such a powerful performance over the long term? Well, I think our strategy of investing in debt free companies works because most debt free companies are qualitatively good companies. The reason they are debt free is because they have a sound business model and has a management team that does not believe in taking a lot of undue risks. Besides, a short holding period of one year ensures that we are booking profits at regular intervals and are also not allowing a losing stock to remain in the portfolio for long. Therefore, we are not only moving out of our winners, but are also replacing our losers with a new stock that may turn out to be a better performer. Of course, we are not using any valuation filter and for a value investor like me, this has definitely come as a surprise because we believe in buying a stock only if we think it is trading at a big discount to its intrinsic value. But I'm also aware of the fact that value investing is not the only market beating strategy out there. 
there are many others and investing in a portfolio of debt free small cap companies with a holding period of one year seems to be one of them. So Benjamin Graham was right after all. Stay away from debt and you will do well. In fact, you can even earn great market beating returns if you put together a portfolio of debt free small cap companies and have the discipline of buying and selling them at a predetermined interval. I think it will be a good idea to try this strategy out. That's all from me today. I'll see you again in the next session. Goodbye and take care.